Hi, I'm Pamela, and today I'm going to show you how we do unmoderated remote usability testing here at Crema using two of my favorite tools, Figma and Maze. As designers, we make design decisions based on assumptions, patterns, mental models, best practices every single day. And while we are experts on UX and usability, we are not the users. So we always have to make a space during this process to evaluate these designs. However, we know timeframes are tight and deadlines need to be met. Coordinated, moder moderated usability testing takes time, not only finding a moderator, but also a coordinating team schedules, participant schedules can take a lot of time. So this is when tools uh, like Maze come in handy because they allow you to evaluate designs really quick, gain insights and just create a test and send it to participants and they can take this test in their own time. So to get started, all you need is of course a Figma prototype. I have set up this Figma prototype and it's a super simple flow of a shoe store and here as a user I have landed into the article page page where I have to make a decision if I want to get these shoes or not. What I would like to test in this layout is if the select a size feature is understandable to the user and I picked this example because I think this is the perfect use case for using Maze because it's a really simple design problem that is very important in the purchase process, but something that a moderated testing can help you as a designer gain insights. If we were testing something like the whole layout, the approach to language, the photography, all these components and how they're working together, I think in my opinion, you probably need to do a combination of moderated and unmoderated testing because at that point you kind of need to see the participant body language if they're confused and it's going to be really hard for you to see that if you are not looking at it and you're looking at the person. So that's why I brought this example. My first tip when it comes to Figma is if you have a Figma file that you use with your team and that where you build all your screens, where everyone collaborates, where ideally everyone is commenting, the product managers, the developers, that file probably is really heavy. And there is a limitation when it comes to the weight of the file in Maze. So what I like to do is that I separate my Figma file for research purposes from my main design file. I either bring these artworks as a library or I just copy and paste and redo the whole prototype. Something else that I wanna mention when it comes to the Figma prototype is that the Figma file needs to be open to anyone. So you have to uh, select anyone with a link can access the prototype. The reason is because in Maze, you can only upload the Figma file this way. And I know there, is a, there could be a concern around NDAs or the product not being public, but no, you can actually prote protect your Maze uh, work so then you have that uh, protection there. Finally, all you have to do in Figma is to go to select the artboard after you have completed all the linking of the pages, you're going to select the artboard and then click play and go into present mode. And from here, you copy the link that you are gonna import into Maze. Now we jump into Maze. Here, after you log in, a, you land into this page where you can create a new project. I'm using a pro account, so I have access to all the features at this point. So I'm gonna call this project my shoe store. You can also use templates to create different type of user activities, a card sorting, tree test, usability testing. That's what makes Maze really powerful because it's not only A-B testing, there are other type of research activities you can uh, use this tool for. So here I am in my Sure Store project, and now I'm gonna create a new maze. You can create your maze from scratch, or you can also, like I mentioned before, you can use all the templates they have available here. I'm gonna 
gonna go and start my maze from scratch. So here we have maze on the on the left we is where we can add the different blocks and we have a predetermined uh, welcome screen that you can edit so you can use custom messaging and select the toggle and you you can add a title uh, i'm gonna say welcome to my test this is the first screen the participant is gonna see when they uh, get the, they get this link so make sure it's inviting and make sure it has all the information that you would say if this experience was in person there is a, another tier here in maze where you can add your own branding so you can toggle the, this on and also add an image here what i would do is i would add the logo of my product for instance and you can add a message as well after adding the welcome screen, the next thing that I can do is add a blog. Here is where I can import that Figma a prototype. The first thing I'm gonna do is add a mission. So here is where you give the user a task. So my task is gonna be, can you select your shoe size? I'm gonna put six and a half because that's the one i have in the prototype and add it into your shopping bag you can add more details if needed in this description box and then you can add here is where you add the prototype so i'm gonna copy and paste that prototype and here is where i can import this depending on the size of your prototype it can take a, a few seconds and here is where i can uh, add that path the powerful thing here is that you can add multiple paths so you can actually test if a use, if where users go first and you can also a, a screen a collect videos and a screen record so that's also another powerful aspect because then you can see where people are clicking and once you get the reports from maze you also get the heat map so that's also another powerful uh, insight as you uh, create these designs. So I'm going to create the paths here. So like I said, I have the selection here is 615. You add it to the bag, it's added to cart and ready. So it's a very small flow. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a yes, no uh, question block. And here it's where I'm gonna ask if this feature meet their expectations. So I'm just gonna say did the shoe selection feature work as expected yes or no my last block is gonna be an open-ended question this can be a very powerful part of the study where a user can provide further insights further in feedback probably things were not even considering at this point so my question is gonna be do you have any other feedback and I'm gonna select text. So this is gonna be a text box in the test. After that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna preview. So you go to the top right and you preview your test. Unfortunately, Maze doesn't let you take a test and then uh, delete that test. So we don't wanna muddy the data we're gonna get. So all you can do is preview it, but so make sure it's ready to go before publishing because we won't be able to make changes once it's been published. So here I have my maze test. It has the title that I gave it. I use a, a pre-populated instructions, but make sure to accommodate those to whatever you would say if this was in person. I, get, I click get started and I see my first mission, which is a, make this shoe selection and I have to go into a prototype. I select as instructions are saying 6.5. I add it to the bag and I'm ready to go. And once I complete the test, Maze tells the user, hey, well done, you completed the mission. From here, you can continue and then it keeps the test. It's asking me the follow-up question that I had, which is just a yes, yes, no question. Hey, did the shoe selection uh, work as expected? And I say yes. And then I just have an open-ended question at the end where the user can type. Perfect. So then it says, thank you for using Maze. And that's it. Once you publish this, uh, this test, then you're going to start getting the reports. And I 
do not have those two shows because I don't have results yet, but those are really, really helpful uh, for understanding where users are getting stuck, where we can refine our designs, some, something like a small tweaks that we can make that can make the experience for the people using our products better. And as the people creating these products give us the confidence that what we are uh, giving developers to build is something that, that has been validated, that has human insights from people that are going to eventually use the product, not just going with the signs that while they have, well, we have all the knowledge of experience and usability, don't have that user insights. Hope you can apply these tips and insights into your next usability test case. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, please use the box below. Bye.